What is interesting is I thought yesterday and um, Thursday in practice, we did a great job against the zone. Moved the ball, found the open man, made some good shots, and I thought we were very well prepared to play a great game today. Uh, but it seemed like uh, the Syracuse zone must be better than our scout team zone because it was very, very hard to score today. And uh, even some of the shots we made were really challenged. Their defense was very good. Um, we settled for way too many deep threes. You know, we wanted to shoot some threes, but and 31 might have been all right if they were all good shots. But um, I told the team at the first time out that the first shot we took was DJ Vasilovich open for three off a dribble penetration, and that was exactly what we were looking for. But like our next five threes were rushed and from very, very deep. And I didn't think there was any reason for that, that we needed to be a little calmer. But we're youthful, a uh, young team, especially uh, those perimeter players, and uh, anxious uh, to play well. And uh, you got to give Syracuse some credit. I thought our defense was pretty good, and it was an even game at halftime, 25 all. And then we hit a, a cold spell, and they were able to build a 10-point lead, and that really hurt. We fought back. And again, I thought we were in pretty good position uh, with five minutes to go. But uh, um, uh, like many of these games, it comes down to, you know, you got to execute and make some shots, make some defensive plays. And uh, they did a better job of executing down the stretch. Coach, you talked a little about those threes. Even at the end, some of the ones that got you guys back into it were contested threes. The one under Quan, I think, was running down the shot clock. Do you think it's just like a sense of frustration from your team with the zone? And just like, I'm I just think the zone is good. Point. The zone is good, and those guys are big. And so one of the things we talked to the players about uh, in the last couple of days was how Syracuse defends the corner. And it's hard to get corner threes, but if you do catch it, you need to be prepared to shot fake because their five man is flying from the baseline and trying to block it. But our guys, first couple of times, caught it and shot it, and the guy blocked it. So some of it is... That's really a hard defensive play to make. You know, you got a seven-foot guy underneath the basket, and you throw the ball to a guy who's open in the corner, and all of a sudden some seven-footer is flying at you, and you think, oh, there's no way he can get to me in time. But I remember uh, when Syracuse won the national championship with Carmelo Anthony, the play of the game was Hakeem Warwick doing exactly what they did today. They got an open three. Who did they, who'd they beat in the finals? Kansas. Yeah, they beat Kansas in the finals. The guy got an open three in the corner, and Akeem Warwick came from underneath the basket to block the shot. <laughs> so you got to give the opponent credit, and, and they did a good job with that. As you try to figure out you know, who can do what you know, without Bruce Brown, as you guys are trying to figure out you know, that, what answers have you found as to who should play or can't play? Well, uh, the real, the real answer to that is it's hard to play without Bruce because of how much he impacted the game. And in our first three games, I thought we did a great job and, and we won those games. But as, as the season progresses, every you know, little mistake or you, you can't go to the bench for a particular guy now, um, it becomes more challenging. And... Uh, you know, you, I told the team the other day, you can't feel sorry for yourself. Everybody's in this boat. We're seven and seven. I think at the end of the day, there might be like six ACC teams that are seven and seven. Right, what does that say? Nobody's any good? No, it means everybody's like pretty good and, and it's hard to win. I, I think right now we're seven and seven. Syracuse is seven and seven. I think NC State is seven and six. Uh, I think Virginia Tech might be six and seven. Uh, Boston College is six and seven. So, you know, by tomorrow, maybe there's eight teams that are seven and seven. So it's just the way it is. Can you talk about uh, uh, Coach Baham was saying that uh, last year, Kamari Murphy really hurt them? Yeah, Kamari played great in, against Syracuse. And that uh, today, you guys didn't have that much of a low post president, didn't hurt None. Them. No, no, not low post. That, that, that really was not the issue. Mm -hmm, just inside scoring. 
No, it, it, it's a, a little bit more. There's, there's several different ways you can penetrate the defense, all right? Actually, four. You can pass into the three-second lane. We had a very hard time doing that. And every time we did, they deflected the pass. So that eliminated that. You can dribble penetrate, but you got to be really quick to get by that initial defense. The only guy on our team that did that successfully was Chris Likes. The third, the third way is you post feed. And we just couldn't. The, the, the guy is seven foot two inside, and the six eight and six nine Wing players make it very hard, and our guards are too small to just get an open look to throw the ball inside. So it's not like we couldn't score. We couldn't get it to them. And then the last way is offensive rebound. And we did get 12 offensive rebounds but uh, and 10 points off of, off of that. So, but they eliminate the passing in, inside. We try to throw the ball. Jaquan Newton, when we first put him in, I put him in the middle of the zone. We wanted him to get the ball so he maybe could make some plays and stuff. We couldn't throw it to him. They couldn't even see him. And then we put Sam Wardenberg there and uh, Anthony Lawrence there, and we couldn't throw it to them. But partially because even though they're bigger, the guards who are guarding our guards are so much bigger, it, it's like there's an umbrella. So I'm going to try to throw it up, but there's an umbrella over the top of me. <laughs> So you got to rely on Chris Likes and probably a little too much. Chris, Chris ended up four for 16. We, we asked him to do too much today. He had 14 points on 16 shots and only two or 10 from three because so many of those threes are, are so far out. Now, he has great range, but you got to back up so far. Jim, it's the first time three losses in a row this season. You've talked about how sometimes they press. Do you worry that with four games left, that might be a situation that you have to deal with because of the age? Do you worry that they might start pressing these last four games? Well, pressing is uh, more um, about putting pressure on yourself. And every game is so different. Uh, when we go to Notre Dame, the different personnel, different style, we might play great. But if you get off to a bad start and guys start missing shots, that's when they start to press. Where right within the game, they, they start, oh, man, I'm not having a good game again. When you sat down, you were looking at the stat sheet. Was that 31 three point? Was it 31 three point? No, that, I looked at that as soon as the game was over. No, what I was interested in is I, I was – trying to figure out if we tied the game or if the closest we got in the last five minutes was three. I knew we came within three. I just didn't know if we tied it at any point. And when I looked up at the clock at one point, I said, wait a minute, there should be like seven minutes left in the game, and it was only like four. Well, there, there must have been a period of time where um, there were no fouls, there was no nothing, and the, the clock just kept running. Jim? You know that, that the teams are going to continue to play your zone. And yeah. We talked about it. And Notre Dame's been playing a lot of zone. Yeah. What are you going to emphasize in practice now as you prepare for all these teams? Look I'm going to emphasize to them to, to play like we practiced because we did a great job against the zone yesterday and the day before. But we don't have a, a guy like uh, Chuck Wu and, and uh, Brissett and Dolage making those passes inside. And, and our scout team does the best they can at trying to simulate what the opponent does, but can't simulate that. We don't have. How about DJ? Last year he had nine threes against him, and when we talked to him yesterday, he said that he was hitting him in practice against the zone. Yeah, he was. Here's, here's what I would tell you, and this is really not only about DJ, but about um, Jaquan. There's a major difference when you have – uh, Davon Reed and Kamari Murphy, who are both playing really, really well, and Bruce Brown, who was playing really, really well. And now you're the fourth or fifth option like Jaquan was or like DJ was, uh, whether it's against Syracuse or any other team. You have upperclassmen who really, you know, in, in uh, Murph's situation, he's 23 years old. 
he, he had played two years at Oklahoma State, sat out a year. He was very comfortable with what his role was on the team, very confident in the way he was playing. He knew exactly how to play against uh, the various teams that we were going to face, and Davon was too. A lot different than you replace them with freshmen, and now Jaquan and DJ are not getting the same shots or same opportunities. And it's not the fault of the freshmen. They're learning. They've, they've got to learn. And maybe the next time we play, we'll play better against them. Same with you know Virginia earlier in the week. There's, you, when you're a freshman, unless you're just better, and you see there aren't that many teams better. They're just all about the same. It's, we're 7-7, seven and seven, Syracuse is 7-7. Seven seven. Well, which team is better? Because they beat us today, they're better? Well, we beat NC State at NC State. They lost to NC State at home. I mean, it, right now, there's a lot of depth and balance in the league. And hopefully we can bounce back and play well in these last four games. we got two at home and two on the road. But the four teams we're playing are pretty good. There's nobody, uh, I don't think, outside the top 50, are they? Notre Dame might have been, but I don't think so. I think they're like 48th and... Carolina's in the top 20. And Coach, yesterday you talked a bit about um, the quick change. You know, you got the home game and then you got to travel um, to Notre Dame on Monday. Just talk a little bit about the approach and what you tell the team. As you well, we made a, a decision earlier in the week not to stay at home and practice at home tomorrow uh, because of travel. What we decided is we're going to get the guys up in the morning and go. And when we get to Notre Dame, we'll, we'll practice at their arena and hopefully the guys will feel a little bit more comfortable and confident. We'll then shoot there on uh, Monday afternoon and we don't play till I think, 9 o'clock on Monday night. Is that right? Seven. It's 7 o'clock Monday night. Then what is it, the Carolina game? Yeah, so I got those mixed up. So uh, we'll get a chance to shoot uh, at the Notre Dame arena and hopefully by then our guys will feel um, – confident in the way they shot the ball in the arena we're going to play in. Jim, to shift gears a little bit, the shirts pregame, obviously um, what you all did, and, and Syracuse participated as well. How did, how did that come about? Um, today's Saturday. So on Thursday at our staff meeting, we were just crying over what happened. Um, and we felt like we needed to send a message uh, to Parkland and, and those families that we're all impacted by this. Uh, I, I think we have to do something about our gun laws. I just think it's, we're not the wild, wild west where everybody should carry a gun. And there needs to be some accountability and responsibility for the people who are in charge of selling guns and buying guns. But you know, my staff was very adamant that we needed to do something. And we contacted our compliance, who reached out to the NCAA who, and, and our administration. They gave permission to do the T-shirts. We reached out to Syracuse to see if they'd like to join us in our efforts. They were in agreement, and we reached out to a local guy. We didn't want to... Uh, have any logos or anything on the t-shirts, just the hashtag and our message that we're with you. Jim, is there any update on, on Bruce, how long he'll, you think he'll be out? Uh, I just go with what the doctors told us originally. There's no change in that status six weeks from the time of the surgery. How about playing without him now in the impact? Yeah, he can't play in the boot. Um, He'd probably like to, though. <laughs> um, so that, that's not really in our thinking. We know we don't have him. We need to uh, play without him now. Yeah, one more question. Thanks, everybody.